Dana, welcome to Grounded. We're excited for this conversation. I am excited. And oh my gosh, you're all sharing your ages. You're all so young. I was mm. just 42, Erin, five minutes ago. And now I'm That's what everybody says. You want to share? You don't have 71. to share your number if you don't want to, but you want to. Oh, 71. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 71. I'm proud of it. Proud you, of it. You look gorgeous. <laughs> and I know it's not all about how you look, it's about how you feel. So we're going to jump into a conversation. Yeah, I want to yeah. start with some definitions and maybe some okay. common symptoms so we know where we are. There probably are some members of our listening audience that are so young, they're not in any of these phases yet, but they soon will be. Uh, because I know the age range is, is varied, most of us are somewhere in this. So help us with some definitions. Perimenopause, well, peri what are some of the symptoms? Perimenopause, it's the years leading up. It's, you know, we have a certain number of eggs. We're born with a certain number of eggs in our ovaries. And really, they're just running out, right, month after month. Mm -hmm. And so as we hit perimenopause can be up to 10 years. And so for some women on the early end, it might be in, in the mid thirties. Um, again, just depending on your genetics and physiology and all that. Uh, but commonly in the early, early to mid forties, uh, or when you start to notice the symptoms and we all hear about, mm. you know, hot flashes, night sweats, but this whole emotional side, our hormones yeah. are shifting so much that we can really go, you know, we, we sometimes experience that early on called PMS, you know, we have, right. there's lots of physiological reasons for it and things we can control, but there are also things that really are just changing so, so dramatically. Um, so when you start experiencing some of those symptoms, that's when we start to say, well, I'm in perimenopause, but you really are mm -hmm. sometimes before you even feel it. It's the thriving through the transition that's the biggest challenge physiologically but also yeah. as you already mentioned in the intro emotionally um yeah, we're gonna get to those emotional on. symptoms soon because i think that's where women are like help yeah. me uh, so much yes. i, I want to make a confession my husband jason and i are now in the phase of marriage where he is always freezing and i am always burning up so i think that means that i'm in perimenopause and uh so i'm eager to hear your thoughts okay menopause yes. You got, you can so be up to 10 years in perimenopause. How do you know when the switch has happened? Menopause is, is actually medically defined as missing your period 12 consecutive months. That's when okay, you're officially so menopause. And then technically then you're postmenopausal. So I have been mm. postmenopausal for 21 years. And I say this wow. with great pride because I want to say to y'all, you will survive and you will mm. thrive. But there's some things, so many things we can do mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually that, that can help us. Okay. I want you to coach us up on that for in a minute, but uh, we are Christian podcast. We're always trying to open our Bibles and get insight for our lives. So do you think God cares about these hormonal changes that happen inside a woman's body? Hey, he created us that way. He created mm -hmm. us for these seasons. There's seasons of, you know, as we're in child in childhood, we're growing in, um, you know, puberty and all those we're preparing for, um, you know, having babies and all that. And this, I think what happens with women is we think this is like all negative. We are going to, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're aging. It, it signifies so often, but yes, God cares. He cares about every season. And I think, you know, in Ecclesiastes, of course, we remember that those beautiful phrases, there is a time for every season under heaven. There's a time for this season too, girls. Um, yeah. But, you know, again, we, we want to negotiate it well and acknowledge there are some challenges, but he cares about all of it. When I'm coaching women all the time through our, our Eat, Live, Thrive diet, we're always saying, if you care, God cares, and he cares about your health, your well-being, all of it. Um, and I do believe that in this current day and age, because of some of the ways we eat and our environment, I do think physiologically we're, we're handling some tougher things that maybe than we did in many, many years past. And so those are things we have to address um, practically, but yes, he cares. <laughs> it's so good. I mean, we do, you're right. We live in a fallen world. Our bodies are stamped by sin. And so we feel some yeah. of the effects of that. But I wanted to ask that question, even though I knew how you're gonna answer it, because I think we can kind of put hormones in a box. There's my spiritual life, 
there's my relational life, and then there's this other thing that I've never thought about how it intersects with my faith, and we want to think that through today. One of the most common symptoms is increased irritability, and it's become a cultural joke. I mean, people just joke about how horrible women can be during that time, how irritated we are. I was in the beauty shop not long ago, and all of the women were talking about it, and one of the beauticians said, nobody can do anything right when you're in menopause, and everybody laughed, and I thought, uh, I don't, I'm not sure I want to write myself that permission slip to be irritable right. for 10 years or longer. So the emotional peaks and valleys are no joke. What can we do to combat those hormonal induced feelings that feel very, very real? Oh, they are real. And in fact, mm. I had a Christian psychologist friend, I was interviewing her years ago on this sub very subject. And she said, as a psychologist, I would not have realized, but she went through a premature menopause because she had a full hysterectomy and her ovaries mm. removed. So full blown, she said, I literally thought I was going crazy. And here I am a yeah, psychologist. And she said, I, I'm so glad I experienced that because now as I counsel women, there's very real um, physiological changes that impact us emotionally and mentally. And mm. this is hard because it's not just a, okay, I, I got to pray myself out of this. I mean, you asked me, does God care? He absolutely cares. But but there are these changes. And I, I I think the biggest message I want to say to women experiencing some of these things, um, don't give yourself permission. I like what you said, Erin. I'm giving myself just mm -hmm. a hall pass. I can just act any way yeah. I want for the next 10 years. And it's not going to be 10 years. Let me also say that most of you aren't going to feel mm -hmm. those intense symptoms for 10 years. But at the same time, you've got to give yourself a lot of grace because hormones are powerful. Um, mm. And I do, and I, I balance that with also take a lot of personal responsibility because what you do in your lifestyle, your diet, uh, exercise, your your quality of sleep, things that you can control, you can't totally control, but you can influence greatly. Those will yeah. impact your hormones and bringing balance. So there's that balance of giving yourself grace. There's praying for a supernatural intervention. There's doing mm. your part. But I mean, I, I wrote a book years ago called The Heat Is On. I wanted to call it Holy Hotties. Uh, mm. <laughs> but it was, you know, it was a book about menopause for, for, for Christian women. And mm. uh, I had a chapter called Hormone Hostage Husbands because, mm. and my husband wrote a few pages in that chapter because there was a season for me about three years Years, I just wanted to bite his head off. You know, it's like a. Are you saying mantis. that your husband and I survived? You, you and your husband survived menopause and writing about menopause and stayed married. Is that what you're saying? Yes, and we're going to celebrate 38 Amazing. years here in a month. So mm -hmm. you, you will get through, girls. But there's a lot of grace needed, uh, and the people surrounding you to be able to mm -hmm. to express you know, how you're feeling and then really praying for that ability to modulate your, your reactions. Yeah. You know, actually the Bible doesn't call us to self-control. It does in some places, but what's really talking about is spirit control saying, Holy spirit, I feel out of control. I need you to take control. It was a lesson I had to learn in pregnancy. I could have gone through pregnancy, eating ice cream all day, every day and gained a zillion more pounds than necessary. And I would have been making it much harder on me and my baby than I needed to do. So same thing. I couldn't write a permission slip then. I don't want to write a permission slip now. So I love that you're encouraging us to pray about what's going on. Listen, women can be each other's greatest allies and we can also be uh, the opposite of that. We could be very hard on each other. So what are some practical ways that Christian women can support each other as we're walking through these years of menopause and perimenopause? I, I think older women like me can come alongside and say, you know, these are, these are some of the things that worked for me. They worked for me with my relationship with my husband. You know, mm. it, it, it's as simple as maybe putting a post-it note on the door, you know, or a, a, a different color code today is a really like, you know, a bright trend lines. <laughs> yeah. Just to be honest with your emotions of the day to um, find, again, I do think there's a lot of physical things we can do that modulate the, the extremes of these hormone shifts. And, mm -hmm. um, and that's something to also to pray about because, uh, we talk about praying about controlling our emotions and our words and all that. But I say, take this journey, this menopause journey to prayer, um, with, with God and journal and say, Lord, these are, 
give me wisdom. Is hormone replacement therapy for me? Um, help me find the right books and mentoring and the kind of experts that really will help me find the physical balance. Because see, that's mind body connection and the hormones. They're so powerful, that, but yeah. God created them. And so, and, mm. and to give you wisdom, what are the things I'm doing in my lifestyle that are, are creating some of the, the imbalances? Now, we're going to have hormone shifts naturally as our, as our ovaries, you know, put out the last eggs and all that. Um, and that's, you know, that's a whole nother matter for prayer too, is, is HRT mm. for me. I but love networking that. with quality Lord. women. Mm. Yeah, not the women, you know, we can definitely laugh. We can definitely encourage each other. But I'm so blessed by those friends who don't let me reach for the wrong kinds of things when I feel those things that ask the hard questions, that pray with me. We need to be each other's champions in every season. You've said there's lots of things we can do, and I know we could talk endlessly. You've written books about it. You've got a whole website we're going to point them to. But maybe give us a top two or three practical things yes. we can do when we're entering these seasons. Well, seriously, even before you talked earlier about your younger um, viewers, I mean, the truth is the earlier we start with just a healthy diet, and yes, I'm a health coach and I've written all sorts of health books, but I am not like a fanatic. You will see mm. me, you know, like, well, she eats a little bit normal, but I, we can make a lot of changes. And I, I do think the processed food, the sugar, all these things, they really, at one, they lead to weight gain. And we know that when women are overweight, they tend to have much more severe symptoms. Uh, there's something mm. going on with the body fat and so forth. And so if we can be at least a reasonable, healthy weight, that will help the quality of the food. There is some science that says that too many grains can actually cause um, some negative menopausal symptoms. Uh, mm. Our carbohydrate thresholds start to drop at 30. So if we can adjust our, our total protein, carbohydrate, and um, fat ratios a little bit. And I'm not about being all heavy keto or anything, just really reasonable. But these little shifts, that yeah. diet and exercise and sleep component, if you can get the handle on those and, and notch those up, even 5, 10, 20% in these years in perimenopause, I think it will make menopause easier, um, help mm. you balance your, your hormone, help, help the hormone imbalance not be as dramatic. I so agree. It was in my 40s that I started to take responsibility for my own body, the foods I eat, whether I move, and, and saw what a difference it made in my whole life. So I just affirm all of that so much. I want to end with kind of a heavy question. Uh, I think okay. we talked about it. There is a temptation to point to these very real physiological symptoms as an excuse for sin. Uh, but I don't, being frustrated isn't necessarily a sin, but certainly we can sin with our tongue when we're in that state. I think we can be angry and not sin. The Bible says that, but certainly we can sin in our anger how do we avoid that temptation to sin as our body is changing? <laughs> what a what a huge question. Well, and also feeling sorry for ourselves. You know, kind of that mm. you might not equate that as sin, but just that wallowing kind of poor me. Yeah. This, I think I don't know. It sounds like is, the Israelites to me, so I would maybe qualify it as sin. Exactly. Yeah. True. It's it, it's 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 groaning and moaning, and this is the mm. season. I mean, this is the day the Lord has made. This. Today is the day. Yeah. Don't waste it by feeling like, you know, I just got to get through this. You know, we then we lose a whole season of life that we're not fully embracing. And so, again, I go back to my prayer journal when I'm struggling with something mm -hmm. that I know is bigger than me. And most things are, aren't they? I mean, nothing's bigger yeah. than God. It's just mm -hmm. a journaling to me is a powerful way and saying, Lord, reveal to me in this this emotionally labile time in my life, which I can't completely control the hormonal side, reveal mm. to me where I am sinning, where my I'm not watching my words, where I'm giving myself an excuse, like you called it, a hall pass to speak abruptly. Um, and and then I think just the, the peace of God, you know, in Philippians 4, when he says, be anxious for nothing, how about be, you know, don't be all tied up in menopause, <laughs> Instead, mm. pray, let your request be made known. And, you know, the peace of God can even surpass 
fluctuating hormones. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. bigger than the hormones. And so we, we yeah. ask for some supernatural intervention because yeah. it is bigger than us. Mm, amen. And, and, and prayer and confession go together so often. So if you're listening to this, you're listening to Dana talk and you're realizing, oh, I have been using hormonal changes as an excuse to sin. Use that chat feature right there. Let us know about it. But more importantly, run to your Christian sister and let her know I've been sinning and I've been acting out of control and help me pray about this. Dana, you have written a lot about this. Our own Dana says she's found a plethora of advice and encouragement on your website. Will you point women to that website? Tell us where to go and point us to any other resources you want us to know about. Absolutely. The home-based website is called leanhealthyageless.com. It's for every age, but we do specialize in mature women. Uh, The book, our most recent book, which is really, really helping women of this age, anywhere from let's just say 35 on, is called the Eat, Live, Thrive Diet. And it Mm. is really designed for Christian women, but gives a real practical approach to doing your part on on the physical dimension and changing our habits from the inside out with biblical concepts of renewing our mind, as it says in Romans 12 too. Um, So I'd love to just connect with any woman that's struggling. Feel free to email us through the website and and take advantage of some of the many free resources there. I did create a post. I will be clicking and buying that. Oh, go ahead. ahead. I did create a post for your listeners just with uh, some basic resources and and top couple physical ideas um, to help if they're they're right in the midst of all this uh, perimenopause and menopausal madness. All right, sisters, you heard it. Run, don't walk. Uh, fan yourself as you go if you're having a hot, hot flash as we talk about this to that website, a post that she created just for you. I, I'm i imagining the church, the women of the church, being equipped to move through these seasons of life with a lot of grace and dignity and eyes on the Lord and what a gift that would be to our families, to our communities, to the world. So it really does matter. Danny, you gave us such wise input. I'm so grateful for this conversation. Thanks for being on Grounded. My pleasure. Thank you, Aaron.